My deliverer from angry nations, you set me above my assailants. You saved me from the violent man, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear friend, good morning. I'm sure you are so ready for this new month. It is the first day of April in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2020. <laughs> I don't want to use what socially we call this day, Fool's Day. There is no day called Fool's Day. Every day is the Lord who has made. And in every day, we rejoice and are glad in it. So today we are saying, this is the day that the Lord has made. And with a lot of expectations and hope, we enter into this new month. And today I want us to prophesy that before the end of this month, we'll have seen the last of coronavirus. Please let us prophesy that in spirit. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children sanctified by penance. And in your kindness, grant those you stir to a sense of devotion, a gracious hearing when they cry out to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friend, allow me now to share with you the gospel of the day. If the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. We are reading today from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 8, verses 31 to 42. At that time, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How is it that you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not continue in the house forever. The son continues forever. So, if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham. Yet you seek to kill me. Because my word finds no place in you, I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do what Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me. A man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God, this is not what Abraham did. You do the works of your father. They said to him, We were not born of fornication, we have one Father, even God. Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded and came forth from God. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. The Gospel of our Lord. My dear friend, 
Today, allow me to start with a quote from one writer called Kevin. He says that uh, the truth that people don't want to hear is the truth that sets them free. The truth that people do not want to hear, it is the truth that sets them free. Today, we reflect on freedom in Jesus Christ. Every one of us is called to live according to the dictates of our Lord. You know, when these fellows were talking about Abraham, something came to my mind about now the, the current wave in quite a good number of our societies re reversing, as it were, or retrogressing, as it were, to the cultural practices and thinking that maybe there is something we left behind. And I remember one day I was sharing with a gentleman and uh, he was telling me about the culture, the traditions, why he now feels that uh, he has found the light, the light. <laughs> and I was asking him, you see, the guy was married for 29 years. And I asked him, for 29 years, you have been married. For 29 years. What new truth have you known overnight about your wife that she is not fit for you? For 29 years. What new have you seen? Which is that culture in the world that demonizes your wife or women for that matter? What culture in the world that gives you power to ostracize? If you say that uh, we belong to Abraham in this context, then you'll say, no, even Abraham respected humanity. That is the point. And I remember because I have been able to see a number of books <laughs> in my life, in my academic life. I have seen quite a number of books. And I remember one book that has been written by a gentleman called Father Canyoro. And he talks about Africans. Of course, he uses a very derogatory term. But he says, the savages had an idea of God. The savages had an idea of God. That's what Father Canyoro says. The savages are the Africans. They had an idea of God. So they knew God right from the beginning. So today you cannot tell us that you have realized a cultural practice or maybe a culture that is telling you that a man should be like this, a woman should be like this, children, anything that dehumanizes, please note this, anything that dehumanizes is not a cultural let alone Christian. And therefore, that is the point Jesus is pointing. If it is true you are talking about Father Abraham, he is our father of faith. Then you ought to be better people. But you are people who are running away from truth. And this is reminding us today, we have so many men, so many women, who are actually running away from truth. And the most tragic thing is, these are the men and the women who are by far and large exposed academically. Then you ask, now, if somebody who is so well academically exposed will behave like this, what is the role of education in humanity? Because the role of education should be able to transform human beings. In fact, one philosopher says, an existential philosopher, he says, that education turns beings into human. Meaning, anybody who is called human being is one who has been exposed to education. Now, if you went to school and you have gotten a substantial amount of education, then you ought to behave like a human being. Not anything that is less or even away from that. People have been searching for freedom over the years. And I want to ask today, it is the freedom from what? It must be freedom from whatever that is inhuman. Freedom from whatever that devastates. 
freedom from whatever that removes me from my initial values, the values I stand for. Number two, God's answer to our loss of freedom has always been Jesus Christ. Has always been Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is telling us, wake up. Wake up from the grave. Do you remember our Sunday's message? The resurrection of Lazarus? Do you know what Jesus told him? Lazarus, and he, he shouted, Lazarus, come out. And today, in this context, every day, Jesus is calling us. As we are saying that God's answer to our loss of freedom has always been Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ comes and calls us in our graves, wherever it is that we are lost. Anatuabia amkeni, nyanyukeni, mweze mukayaishi maisha mazuri. That is the point. Those of us who are called after Jesus Christ, then we must be men and women who are liberated. There is no way to run away from that. Number three, Jesus came to free us from death, sin, and anything that is enslaving us. My dear friend, my dear brother, my dear sister, in which slavery are you in? And in whatever slavery you are in today, Jesus is telling you, my son, wake up. My daughter, rise up. Nyanyukeni tafadhari. My son, rise up. None of us was created to be enslaved by sin forever and ever. Amen. No. Today we must say, enough is enough. God gives us freedom to choose our own path. He gives us freedom to choose our own path. Which path have you chosen? Are you comfortable with that path? And please note, Whichever path that you choose, do not drag others into your path of destruction. Please don't. We have a gift, a gift of Jesus Christ. That is why you are a Christian. That is why Father CK is a Christian. I have a gift, a gift of a personal friend, Jesus Christ. We can't be enslaved. And at the same time, we are in Christ. It is not possible. And those of us who are still stuck, let us wake up today, the first day of April, in the year of our Lord and Savior 2020. Let us wake up and say, enough is enough. I have decided to follow Jesus. May it be well with you. Let us pray. Nourished by your savings gifts, we beseech your mercy, O Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be gracious to your people, O Lord, we pray, that as from day to day they reject what does not please you, they may be filled instead with the delight at your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friend, do have a productive first day of April. Whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. May freedom be your portion today and all the days of your life. Thank you.